Hey, it's Fletch with the Avaya Podcast Network, and we're here at the NINA 2013 Conference and Exposition Center, and we're sitting down with Jan Withers from the North Carolina Division of Services for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing within the North Carolina Department of Human Services. Welcome to the podcast today here, Jan. Hi, thank you. Do you fit that title on one business card, or does it fold out? <laughs> So Jen is responsible for um, services for the deaf and hard of hearing uh, in North Carolina and working with 911 agencies. Why don't you give us an overview of uh, how that works here in the state? Sure. We have about one million people in our state who have hearing loss. They are deaf, hard of hearing, and or deaf blind. And all of them could or need access to emergency services, you know, and needing access to 911 call centers. So we have to work with 911 call centers to train them and to make sure that they do have the skills necessary to receive calls through TTYs. We also work with uh, the Durham 911 call center and we've uh, helped them out with some testing of their new text to 911 system which uh, was implemented about two, three years ago. And we're going to continue working with them when they uh, are ready to start uh, delivery of their system full, full scale. So it's really been an honor to have uh, Nina's 2013 conference here in North Carolina, too. And I'm just so thrilled to see everyone here talking about text to 911. It's a really hot issue. And, and you know, it's really the new wave of what's happening with 911 call centers. I did some work with the Federal Communications Commission on the Emergency Access Advisory Committee where we were dealing with text to 911 issues. Um, so it's something that really opened my eyes to the problem. And the fact that a person that was hard of hearing or needed to use text to 911 really was treated like a second class citizen. And I felt that that was just a horrible, horrible thing for this country. So it was, it was really great to see some improvements. What do you think the biggest blockage is to rolling this technology out on a wider scale? Hmm. Well, I really can't speak to that from a technical perspective uh, regarding all the technology. But now with the fact is I know that te the technology is here. I do know that. And I would encourage 911 call centers or people who are in position to make that happen to just recognize that we are here and we deserve the same access to their system as everyone else does. Now, there are actually many more people who could be affected by this system other than people with hearing loss. And if you really think about it, people who are deaf or hard of hearing, they have children or their parents or friends of theirs who may need to be able to have them text 911. So there are other people who, are, who could be affected by this. So I think it's important that that be recognized that we're here and we deserve equal access. I couldn't agree anymore. Um, someone that I worked with quite a bit, Sherry Farina, who works for a advocacy, advocacy group in California. Yes told a story about how her husband was working on something and cut his hand severely and would, she needed to call 911. Um, the first 911 call, the equipment wasn't working or something happened and it sounded like a hang-up call. And it wasn't until 15 minutes later where the call was dispatched as a hang-up that she actually had to flag down a police officer in the street. And that's, to me, when I look at things like, hap like that happening in today's day and age with the technology that we have available um, and the devices that everyone carries, to not have 911 work ubiquitously across that network is just, I, I can't understand what the roadblock is. And when I look at the technology and I, you know, I work with the groups and, and I look at the things that are available at a Gallaudet and everywhere else, I don't see a problem, which really bothers me the most, I think. Yeah. I know Sherry myself, so I, I can imagine 
uh, what she went through with that experience. And, you know, I actually have a personal experience that I can also share with, I'd like to share with everyone here. I live in, in Durham, and I was thrilled when Durham uh, started text to 911. But actually, three months before that system was implemented in Durham, I pulled up my neighborhood's listserv. And just reading that, someone had said that they had heard gunshots nearby, and they were giving a description of the person who had seen that person uh, leave or, or disappear. And about 10 minutes after that, I was in my car to, to leave the house, going to do some grocery shopping. And while driving, I actually saw a person who matched the description that a neighbor had put on our neighborhood listserv. I had my BlackBerry with me, but there was no way for me to text 911. And it uh, took about three weeks for the Durham police actually arrest this person. So just thinking, if I had had that technology available to me at that time, that person would have been arrested that day at that moment. So, you know, you are right. You know, the technology's here. But the matter now is just uh, taking the time and the effort, you know, and we're here as, our, as an agency to work with 911 centers in North Carolina to make that process happen. I think the main problem is the lack of understanding and the lack of communication. People just don't hear these stories because I can't believe that if they did hear them and they're not doing anything about them. So... I think one of the biggest values is to get these stories out there and let people know that there are technology solutions to this problem. And even on the FCC EAC committee, a lot of good work was done there, but time and time and again, examples from Europe had to be provided where they've already solved this problem with total conversation, video, text, everything. Um, because they looked at it from a completely new point of view and they just solved the problem and they didn't let the politics take over into the problem. And I think if we just stepped back and solved the problem, this could go away in a matter of months, not a year. Yeah. And we are here to work with all the 911 call centers in North Carolina. So. Any time that they would like for us to participate, to help them out, we'll be more than glad to do so. And I do applaud Nina for Nina's effort in spreading the word about this, this opportunity. Jen, I can't tell you what, a, what an honor and a pleasure it's been to sit here and, and talk to you and get this message out. Um, if this helps save one life or enable text to 911 to happen one day earlier, then, it, then it's all been worth it. So um, thank you for, for being an advocate. Thank you for sitting down with me today. Thank you to your interpreter for, for letting this interview happen. Um, I'm truly honored. Thank you very much. Oh, and thank you for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Great.